Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. And let me say Shalom unto the elect of the nation of Israel. So I'm to go into this. 1 Peter 5 and 5 is where we'll start. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. For Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Okay, so let's get the actual the words. First Peter five and five. Says likewise, I'll read it again. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for power resisteth the proud. And giveth grace to the humble. So be clothed. Let's get that word clothed. Strong's G 1463. Ekambaomai. 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 Not a band by which two things are fastened together to fasten or gird oneself. So what we clothe what should we rather so should I say? What should we be clothed and girded round about with? Humility. All right, knotted or banding about us should be humility. Fastened together should be us with humility, right? Girded with it. It says, This was the white scarf or apron of slaves, which was fastened to the belt of the vest and distinguished slaves from freemen. Therefore, 1 Peter 5 5, gird yourselves with humility, as your servile garb encourages Christians to show their subjection one to another by putting on humility. This could also refer to the overalls which slaves wore to keep clean while working, an exceedingly humble garment. In you know, Paul, he referred to himself as a prisoner of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and we know we're under this man, E, as slaves, but in this ministry, there's an order to it, man, and we must fall in line. Right, and I'm guilty of not doing that. I'd recently come across a brother's, I was thinking of the brother, at the time of recording this, it was yesterday, I was thinking of the brother. And thinking of the correction he gave me. And I was just proud as fuck, man. And rebellious, stubborn. I didn't see it as an issue. And mixing doctrines. Thinking, oh no, there's not one doctrine. Thinking, oh, if you say you have the truth, that's prideful. How is that prideful, man? That that in itself doesn't make sense. Yahweh I wasn't teaching 90% truth. Right? He taught the scriptures for he was the scriptures. Right? And we believe that he's given that to men on this earth. Not that the truth has just fizzled out. It doesn't exist. Right, so you have to fall in line and take correction, take rebuke. Don't buck up like a woman. Not to say all women, <laughs> not all women. You know, they're very um reactionary. Like it says in Maccabees the her, her um she had to stir up manly thoughts with a womanish stomach. Right, it's a weaker vessel, according to the scripts. Don't be weak. Right? Strength and being you know, just because you get rebuked, just because you're getting corrected, it doesn't mean you're weak. Right? How you respond to it demonstrates that, demonstrates whether you're strong, whether you're weak. Right? And if you're in the flesh, you go, oh, I'm not, I'm not listening to, oh, I'm not listening to that, man. Yeah, it was cool, it was fine, what I did was cool. Like it says, a sinful man shall not be reproved. Let's find that. But find an, findeth an excuse. So Sirach 32 and 17, a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. And sometimes, you know, people could be wrong. When they're correcting you, they could be wrong. That doesn't mean every single time you get corrected that they're wrong. <laughs> okay? You can be wrong. Be teachable. Take some time, and it's it's difficult sometimes. And that's why it takes strength, but to sit back objectively as as well as you can, because yeah, we're still in this dirty flesh. Try to objectively analyze yourself, your behavior. What does it say? Examine yourselves. First Corinthians thirteen, I think that is. Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves? How that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. 
But I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. I mean, you better hope so. I right, said, so take time with it as well. I don't rush into it. <laughs> I remember the first time I'd ever heard it wasn't. Who was I coming? I was a Rasta, you know, a Rasta Farai. If you're Ban Yum Yum, well, you probably know it. If you're outside, you probably know it as well. But the worship of an Ethiopian king, all right, as as if he is the heavenly father, which is completely fucking off. Right, and out of that, I started watching a HOI, a Zabak. I started watching some other camps. And from there, I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's it. we're Israelites then. So I was teaching. When I'd come out of Rasta a bit, but I, I was too soon. I'd not taken time, I'd not got grounded. Yeah, I'd, I'd rushed into it. I was hasty on the left hand side. Right, so take time. Make sure, like it says, who are the elders, who are the youngers? Uh, establish yourself in a body. Not establish yourself, sorry. But um, fall under line, fall in line with a body that's established. Right, because you can't, you can't throw these scriptures out like they don't count or they don't make sense. All these scriptures have to add up. And if there's scriptures that are talking about be subject to one to another, that means there's got to be more than one person with the truth. And that's what, I, again, that's what I was guilty of. Thinking, oh no, it's me and this other brother. We're the only ones in Israel who have the truth. And I wasn't saying that. I wasn't necessarily thinking that. But by the actions that I took, that's what I was showing myself to believe. Right? If you can't take correction, and you say, oh no, that comes off, this comes off, then it, who's got the truth then? Right, someone's got to have it. So First Peter 5 and 5, and now I say it's the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Right, and the men that fall subject to that order. Okay, and there's, of course, Israelites. You know, to say we're Israelites, yeah, you've got the truth. But there's more than just Deuteronomy 28. All right, there's more to this doctrine than Deuteronomy 28. First Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. For the heavenly Father resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the, hum the, to the humble. And we all need grace. It's not of our own works that we're going to be saved. It's not of the keeping of the law. Because no one can keep it 100% that we're going to be saved. So it's got to be, yeah, we've got to fall in line, man. Sirach 3 and 18. In fact, Sarek 3, I'm going to start 17. My son, go on with thy business in meekness. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favour with the Lord, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, the Bahasham, meaning in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus. Right, the more, the better that you are, the more skill you acquire, the more diligent you are, the more knowledge you know, the more precepts you know, the more breakdowns you've learned. Because you learn it, man. Ultimately, you learn it. It's not of yourself again. And that's another thing I was guilty of. Like make it getting getting all this oil and then making up like I'm I'm the I'm the guy. Yeah, I came up with it. I didn't come up with shit. You know, everything that we've learned. It came from somewhere, man. Ultimately, it came from the Heavenly Father. But there's men that taught you. And that's what, you have to give credit where it's due. First Timothy 5 and 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially they who labour in the word and doctrine. Because right, we didn't just pop out the womb and start teaching this. Just out of nowhere, man. There has to be a process. Okay. I believe there's something in First Peter I want. So let me just check.
Alright, forgive me, I can't find that last. Let me pause it one minute. Alright, so like it was in James. James 4 and 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And it's a, it's, a, it's a good quality to have, man. Regardless of your position and office, yeah, it's never going to hinder you. And there's a difference between being a pushover and being humble. Okay. So I will leave it there. And I pray it was edifying, exhorting to you, brothers and few sisters. But on to the next one, Lord willing. And giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Shalom.